Hi guys, Freddy here and welcome to a new style of retro RPG. You see, every week what I'm going to do from now on, I'm going to put five games up on the community tab of the channel in a poll. And I'm going to let you, the viewers, select which one I make a video of. Now, the way I'll work this from now on is the four losers will go on to the next week. And hopefully, eventually, we'll get through everything. But each time one gets voted off and I make a video of it, I'll add another. And that could win the next week. You never know. So you get to choose out of my next five videos, four, five, five videos, which one I'm going to do first. And if there's a game that people aren't really interested in, it will forever stay at the bottom of the poll. As it appears that Cold Hands, Dead Hearts for Black, uh, Big Eye, Small Mouth ended up this week. In fact, I'll put the results up there. But I put this poll up on Thursday and the winner was this, the Doctor Who role-playing game. Now, it wasn't my choice because I would have preferred to leave this for a bit longer as it was only two weeks ago I covered the Faza Star Trek role-playing game. So, same company, same time period, early 80s, and same subject, a television science fiction show. So, I would have probably left it to have a bit of variety, but you have chosen, so let's go over to the desktop and do Doctor Who. And so, this is the Doctor Who role-playing game, a 1985 release from Faza. And Faza seems like a bit of an odd choice to me as an American corporation, compared to Doctor Who, which is a very British show. But I think the cover kind of gives away why Fazza were interested, because Tom Baker was far more popular in America than the Doctors before him and after him. So that's who this game's targeting. Although I must point out that the logo used is more commonly associated with the Fifth Doctor, although it did start with, under Tom Baker's Doctor, the fourth one. Tom Baker had left some years before, and by the time the game was released in 1985, um, we'd gone through Peter Davidson, and we are on to Colin Baker and his companion Perry, played by Nicola Bryant. Uh, Louise Jameson here had actually left the show in 1978, a full seven years before this was published. But let's flip over to the back cover. The Master has stolen a weapon that will give him ultimate control of the universe and of time itself. The Daleks are invading Earth. The Cybermen are terrorizing the space lanes, and the Centaurans and the Rutans are battling to see who wins the galaxy. Only you, the Time Lords and companions of the Celestial Intervention Agency, can stop these villains from changing the course of history. Your weapons are your wits and your TARDIS. To join the Doctor in his adventures to defeat the foes of the universe. You only need your imagination, a pencil, some paper, and this game. Included are the following. The Player's Manual. Rules for creating characters. Rules for play. Ability, ability and skill use. Tactical movement. Combat. Glossary of game terms. The Game Operations Manual. Suggestions on creating adventures. Hints for adventure presentation. Games mastering inf information on creating characters and villains. New worlds and alien creatures. Rules for judging, player actions, time travel, and TARDIS and equipment use. And finally, Sourcebook for Field Operatives, Time Traveler's Handbook, the TARDIS Operator's Manual, Visitor's Guide to Gallifrey, Equipment Descriptions, Background Information on the Doctor and His Companions, the Master, the Daleks, Cybermen, and Tarans, and more. So, let's have a look in the box. I, I bought this on eBay, and I seem to have a small bag of tokens included. Now, these seem to have been used in play. They are Dalek. This says support Dalek. Um, what else we got here? Sontaran. So I guess the owner of this used these for his tactical combat. But they're not actually part of the game. They were just a free gift with it. So let's throw them to the side. We've got the game operations manual. We've got the player's manual, and we've got a source book for field agents. So let's get the box out of the way, and let's start with the player's manual here. So the cover is a kind of uh, weathered leather-like effect. Um, at first I thought it was brown paper to make it look like a file of some kind, 
but it is a plasticky um, aged leather effect to make it look nice. We've got a very fancy border on here. Um, it's quite nice. The three books are only slightly different by the colours on them, but it's an interesting look to it. There's not much to give away. Um, player's Manual. Table of Contents. Introduction for Field Agents. So, what are role-playing games? An introduction to it. Basically saying it's an advanced form of Let's Pretend. Always nice to have our hobby described in that way. Roleplay in the Doctor's Universe. Component descriptions, so the different books in the game. The races. So we go through attributes here. It does it uses strength, endurance, dexterity, charisma, mentality, and intuition. Which seems a little odd. Why mentality instead of intelligence? Because it says mentality refers to a character's mental potential, just as strength measures the physical potential. Okay, um, it's a little of an odd one. The attribute performance levels. So level one, you're handicapped. Then there's untrained, basic performance, professional performance, expert performance, mastery. And that's the different levels. Oh, I skipped over average performance. The surrounds on the pages um, do seem a little odd to me. I took that to be a boxed out area, so I ignored it when I was reading through the levels there. But it's not, it's just part of the design. Um, I do like that level one is considered handicapped. So it's not just you choosing a low attribute or skill that you are basically making your character handicapped in some way. And you can pay, play somebody with the disability. That's cool. I like that a lot. Before advantages bought you, or advantages and disadvantages bought you the same things. Special ability descriptions, and then skills. So the special abilities are you've got enhanced strength, or healing, or telekinesis, luck, blending. The skills are things like um, armed combat, artistic expression, climbing. Nice little sketch of K9 there. We've got an armed combat. TARDIS systems. Personality traits. So whether they're fearful or brave or forgetful. Patient or impatient. Outgoing or shy. Tabby cats and time lords. So we've got a story here. Going through an introductory... Uh, session basically with sets of rules so this one talks about acquiring skills in character creation turn to the section on personality traits and learn how you, this can be done with your character it's a nice way of doing it giving you a story and then saying well if you are playing this story then this is how the rules would apply it's a fairly good introduction to role playing I've not really seen it done this way before um, I've yet to read this in detail to go through, but it seems quite clever. Um, for some reason that reminds me of the character uh, Professor Yana out of the Tenth Doctor's Time, which was some 30 years after this book was published. We've got character creation here. Acquiring skills, determining personality traits, so all the bits which have been described, but we go through them in sequence on how to create a character. Then it's got the rules. So, challenge, using attributes and skills. Confrontation, verbal con conflict, which makes a lot of sense for Doctor Who, since most of the conflicts actually should be verbal rather than physical. Um, weapons, determining successful hits. Tactical movement. A lot on tactical movement here. Injury and medical aid and recovery. Mortal death and injury, restoring health, and then regeneration. Obviously, the way that the Doctor develops between his characters, his species has the ability to renew itself on taking a mortal wound 
They totally regenerate every cell in their body and make themselves a new body to carry on. It's been described in the new series as somebody else getting up and walking away with their memories. Ah, Doctor Who character record. We can see the different attributes laid across for a change. Usually as character sheets tend to uh, run them from top to bottom. Levels, scores, skill points, and the list of different skills. Not that many, but there are a variety. We've got action points, special abilities, personality traits, all laid out across the character sheet. Let's have a look at the source book for field agents. So, this is more of a background setting. So, the Time Traveler's Handbook. This goes through a mini glossary of selected terms, so introduces what antimatter is, charged vacuum embodiments, the daemons, the Doctor, e-space, and things which, if you've watched Doctor Who, you'll be aware of. But if you haven't, then this book would introduce you to. And maybe you've only been aware of some of the series. Maybe you've only watched the Fourth Doctor stuff and you haven't been aware of other uh, periods. So they've introduced a lot of things, going through the species, so we've got Pterolectyls, we've got the Rutans, we've got the Yeti, the Zygon. Theory of time-space tra time travel, so hyperspace, temporal vortex, causality and fluid time. Now this is very different to how time travel will be dealt with in the modern series, because we have things like fixed point in time, which have been introduced in the new series, but... They weren't mentioned in the old. We've got the first law of time here. That a traveller cannot change his past in any significant way by his own actions. Now this is basically what's been introduced into the new series as fixed points in time. Um, in the new series there's certain things that the heroes cannot change. Because if they change them, it changes the timeline so much that they themselves would be deleted. And the changes happen almost instantaneously. Because it's one of the things I do like about Doctor Who, that you don't have to keep continuity going, because literally somebody else can have changed the timeline. So when they face the Daleks at one point, um, they can be radically different in a later episode. They can have to totally been wiped out and then just be back, because history has totally changed. Um, but anyway, carrying on through... Techniques of time-space travel, materialization, micro-jumps, meeting oneself, um, timeline of the universe. So it goes through the different periods of time. Um, in TLs, temporal marauders, so it has the uh, stats for the master here along with a lot of background. We've got Davros. We've got the Cybermen. So it's introducing the main villains of the series for you to use. We've got the Daleks, of course. The Ice Warriors. The Mavellians. Silurians, Rutans. Sontarans, who are a cloned species of warriors. Earth, Nexus of uh, Struggle. The reason why most of the problems tend to come to Earth. Earth Timeline. A TARDIS Operator's Manual. So basically setting up what abilities the TARDIS has. Because some of these aren't uh, apparent. Because obviously the Doctor's TARDIS is broken so the Chameleon Circuit doesn't work. And um, perhaps you haven't seen episodes which explain how the TARDIS key works. But these have all been laid out in episodes, so they're detailed here. The functions of the TARDIS. The cloister bell. The TARDIS computer. Secondary TARDIS control room. Medical facilities. TARDIS damage and repair. Guidelines for selecting visitors. A visitor's guide to Gallifrey. Just going through all the different sections. So Time Lord Society. Because I haven't really mentioned about this game, it's mainly based not around the Doctor and his companions out of the TV show. It's setting up the CIA as the main thing. So the Celestial Intervention Agency, rather than the Central Intelligence Agency, which the initials usually mean. It's a kind of in-joke in the series. But the CIA, the Celestial Intervention Agency, 
assigns Time Lords to go throughout time and alter things, which in the new series has led to the Time War, amongst other things, and the Doctor's actions helped lead to that as well, where the Daleks and the Time Lords were travelling through time in an attempt to defeat each other and delete each other from history, which kind of messed up the entire galaxy. But the CIA sends agents throughout time to fix points, to nudge history in a direction they like. And the player will play a Time Lord, and the other players will play his companions. So maybe humans, maybe aliens, maybe other Time Lords. It's entirely possible to have more than one. So we've got equipment. So a homing beacon on board a TARDIS. Influx booster stabilizer, laser cutters, magnetic clamps. Jelly babies. Because the fourth doctor was obviously known for using them. The sonic screwdriver. We've got different weapons. Cyberwom, disruptors, particle beams, blasters, staser, DMAT gun. Time destructor. Different medical equipment. Just fleshing out the universe for everything. Robots, from Cybermats to K9 himself, going through all the details about him. Including a picture here from K9 and Company, so the first Doctor Who spin-off series. Because Sarah Jane did not have K9 until that spin-off series. Um, the Doctor, so going through his different incarnations, up to the fifth. Obviously when they were writing this, the sixth uh, Doctor was so new that they didn't really have any idea what to write. Although they do, but it's his present incarnation. The Doctor is both larger and odder looking than any of his previous selves. He is normal as t nearly as tall as his fourth form and is heavy set. His curly sandy hair is usually tangled. His red plaid coat has yellow cuffs and is worn over two different waistcoat halves, sewn haphazardly together. So they've got an idea about the Sixth Doctor. Um. Interventionary Companions, so we go through Perry, we've got Susan, who is a Gallifreyan. It doesn't actually detail her as a Time Lord, though. Um, do they do have Romana here, who was a Time Lord? Romana, Gallifreyan, number of regenerations used. So, we do detail Romana. Um, actually, age 120, how old is Susan? Does she, do they mention... Actually, age 38. Okay. Well, she was a schoolgirl when she was introduced, so 38 is a lot older than she appeared to be, but a lot younger than I expect a Gallifreyan or Time Lord to be. And finally, we've got the Game Operations Manual. We'll flick through this. An introduction for Games Masters, designing adventures, so some good ideas, freeform adventures, best of both, linear scenarios... I like the way it covers that and doesn't uh, decry any, because in modern role-playing, linear scenarios are very snidely looked down on. But when you're a games master and you've got a story to tell, a linear scenario can be really useful. Um, steps in adventurous scenario design. Making your designs fit. Going through all the stages and ideas to help you write adventures. Adventuring on new worlds. So we've got a world log and a way of ge generating a planet. Either randomly or I suppose you can select them. We've got alien life. Again, some random tables here so you can create animals as the players just encounter them. Obviously you can design your own, but if you just want some ideas at random, with some lovely tables to use. New civilizations. Again, we've all sorts of tables here to roll on to generate a civilization. Very useful for getting your mind working. You can roll on the tables and get some clues here and then move on from that as you like. Well, actually, I would prefer this. Detailed um, NPCs. So we've got quick NPC design and we've got some suggestions for Gallifreyans. Time Lord Cardinals, Citadel Guard Captains, Citadel Guards, Scientists, Shabogans, Apprentice Time Lords, CIA Agent, then we've got Cybermen, so Cyber Soldiers and Cyber Leaders. Different types of Daleks. The Black Dalek, the Soldier Dalek, Supreme Dalek, the Emperor Dalek. So many leadership Daleks. Um, missing the Gunner Dalek, which was developed and brought into the series many years later. Well, not that many. 
a few years later during the Seventh Doctor's reign. Ice Warriors. Wait a second. Ice Warriors. It just has Ice Warrior, an Ice Warrior leader. There were Ice Lords, I remember as well. Ooh, they forgot them. The Mavellians, Suntarans. Um, officer class, Suntaran, soldier class. Seems a bit odd you would have separate stats because they are clones. Um, Rutans, Silurians, the Sea Devils. Very common enemies, very popular ones but not really covering the full depth of those available in the Doctor Who universe. Presenting scenarios. So how to game the master. Um, you know, do your homework. Use all five senses. A thrill a minute. Using game aids, so whether you're going to use maps. Miniatures. Stretching the design. ODing on technique. A definite idea, because you can spend too much on your technique. It's a game. Have fun. Choosing a race, so going through the different species, you know, acquiring skills, determining personality traits. We've seen this in the character generation section. Judging the action, so a rather large table here. Using the matrix, so how to get information out of the Time Lord computer system. Judging variable success, secret roles and hidden successes. So the idea of rolling behind the, your GM screen. Judging challenge. Just giving people ideas for the different levels of success that people might need to get. So what do we got here? Trap discovery. Whether they could detect a level one trap, a mouse trap, a covered pit, poison needles. Going right up to concealed heat or motion detected mechanism. Saving roles for special abilities. Judging confrontation, so how to judge combat. Using skills. Oh, actually judging combat itself. Critical hit effects, critical fumble effects. Ranged weapon table, determining damage. All the usual sections here. Judging movement. Judging injury, medical aid and death. Again, it's going over the sections that have already been covered, but from the Games Master's point of view, on how to make decisions about these. And that's actually an image from the Fifth Doctor's final story. Uh, judging time travel, judging TARDIS use, just, again, all these sections. You know, time, space, jump, difficulty modifiers, miss jump results. You know, whether you're decades out or whether you manage to make it in on time. Materialization, TARDIS systems operation, TARDIS, system, TARDIS systems damage. The main power system gets blown. Chameleon circuit. Uh, judging system repairs, equipment use. And then we're on to the end where we've got a couple of the tables. Kind of like it for a DM screen, but the Previous owner has cut these out or serrated it out for use when they, they've been games mastering and running the game. And that is the Doctor Who role-playing game. It's not as nice as the Star Trek one from presentation and rules-wise, but there's a lot of really good introduction. This seems more like a basic game for people who are more interested in Doctor Who than interested in role-playing Doctor Who. But we'll go through the rules on Friday and we will see how well it simulates actually being in a Doctor Who story. Anyway, I have witted on for absolutely ages. So thank you very much for watching as always. Please like, subscribe and comment below as it always does me massive favours with the YouTube algorithm. But most of all, you look after yourselves and I'll catch you later. Bye now.